Mitchell Johnson throws balls at Kevin Peterson, as well as we won the Ashes and a whole lot more. Welcome to the 2014 Sean Campbell Show. <laughs> to the new series of the Sean Campbell Show and yes ladies and gentlemen it is going to rock and when I say that I mean it's going to rock but anyway Kevin Peterson what the hell are you doing okay this is what Kevin Peterson does he does beam beam whoosh and Mitchell just went whoosh yep with a ball almost thrown at his face he should have thrown them in the balls but anyway let's get back to the situation Kevin Pearson, you should not back away from a bowler who is bowling the highest speed that he has done in a matter of years towards you, and then he does that, throws the ball at you. Well, you're not allowed to do that. It's bad sportsmanship. No, I'm not talking about Mitchell. I'm talking about Kevin. He has been cheating on that test match. First of all, he reckons he swallowed a fly. If he swallowed a fly, where's the fly? How did the fly get into him when he was close to his mouth, like this, while batting? They are deliberately slowing the game down, and the Australian people don't like that idea. The Australian cricket team complained to the ICC about this situation, and the ICC does nothing because they reckon they own cricket. And of course, it is not a board to deal with. Come on guys, seriously, good sportsmanship is cheering on people going for their hundreds. We have done that, England, no. They haven't done that. Cheering for 8,000 test runs, Alistair Cook, yes, Michael Clark, yes. That's well done from both teams. We won the Ashes 4-0. So England, stop your whinging, stop your cheating, and actually play a proper game of cricket. And they're blaming KP and Swan and all the rest of those guys. The truth is, Graham Swan's retired. Congratulations, Graham Swan, on a great career in Test Match Cricket. And yes, I follow Graham Swan and the rest of the cricketers out there because Graham Swan is one of the best, one of the best cricketers out there. And he is retired and we wish him the best for the rest of the seasons. And um, as maybe a chairman or a coach or maybe even a commentator, it's up to him. Or maybe even county cricket. That's what people are doing right now. County cricket and 2020s. Murali played a great game of 2020 on yesterday. And of course, Sydney Thunder is out of the cricket. They lost yesterday to another Melbourne team. So basically... One Sydney team and one Melbourne team may be currently out of the game. And, of course, the Sixers are going very well at the moment at the um, SCG. So, it, it's great to have a great cricket match and tournament here. The 2020 Big Bash, New South local teams, it's awesome. Shane Warne got the stars in there and, um, I don't know, I don't know. Basically, cricket's up and running, so is the tennis. Golf is finished for the year. Thank Christ, golf is finished. <laughs> the majors are gone. All we have to do is worry about the, the lousy little miners around the place, and that's fine. I don't care about golf. Uh, cricket's fine. Tennis is a bit boring, but you know what? I'm me. I love the NRL, the AFL, and the football. Speaking of which, you wanderers are beauties. So your FC, City FC, going well in there, um... In the season, well, I heard about John Aloisi. I apologise for John Aloisi and the Melbourne Heart. They parted ways recently. They got fought. He got fired after they lost a game. Look, I just want to say this: Melbourne Heart isn't playing that well, and I don't think they're going to play that well until they have at least a very strong team. Harry Kuehl, yeah, you're going to put it on his shoulders. He'll injure himself one day, and he'll be out of soccer forever. So don't risk just one player. Get a set of good players. 
If if you have to go to England, go to England. If you have to do it from the minors, get it from the minors. But seriously, guys, you need a strong team. Sydney, Sydney, Western Sydney, and Sydney FC got their players not from international leagues, no, except for two, but well, one from Sydney FC and one from um, one from Western Sydney. They got it from their local competitions, Olympic, Marconi, Wollongong, all those areas. We have the best team. We have the best soccer players in Australia. New South Wales has got some great soccer players. Football. I'll call it football, but some people call it soccer. So I've, I've got to mix it up a little bit. We got the best NRL players. We got the best rugby union players. We got the best anything. Of course. Those people who played in New South Wales but actually played for Queensland, they're cheating bastards. They should get rid of it. There should be one state, one team. Not one state, one team going from one state going to Queensland. That's bullshit. You know? That's how that's why we've losing a lot of state oranges, because Queenslanders get our players from New South Wales. Alright, so that's all the sporting rants right now. That's it for the that's it for the sporting rants. Right now we're gonna start with a, a very serious story. Um, when I say serious, I mean it's serious. Um, it's a personal one well, actually. If you haven't seen my blog recently um, about what's happening, I was on Twitter and Facebook Science. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, a few weeks ago I found out my mother has breast cancer and right now she's trying to almost beginning her treatment as the time of recording. Um, she could be beginning her treatment next week. I'm not 100% sure. But she called it early with a mammogram and mammograms are very important. Uh, mammograms are like excellent in catching breast cancers early and that's what my mother had done a mammogram at the narrow, uh, narrow breast screen they found a little lump they taken it to a specialist they confirmed it and now she's going through the treatment but she's waiting to get into the hospital now ladies and gentlemen I just want to say this only um, I know it's tough for family and friends that have a person in their lives with breast cancer. Now, I know exactly how you guys feel. It's tough out there. It is tough for family and friends that are suffering from breast cancer. I understand how you guys feel now. So basically, what I want to do right here, right now, is to say this. Women and men, because, yeah, men do have breast cancer as well. Check your boobies. Check your boobies, check your movies, check for lumps or anything around here, especially armpit area, because sometimes they hide there. And... If you, if you find a lump or anything, just go to your doctor. Talk to them, seriously, because if you don't, then things can actually, well, if you don't get it early, chances of surviving breast cancer, if you don't get it early, chances are that you may die from this awful disease and it is a disease cancer is a disease ladies and gentlemen if you don't get this early then your chances of surviving it will be slimmer and slimmer every time you don't get it checked out and sorted it now so talk to your doctor today that's all I'm going to say about the situation right now because I don't want to get emotional on this very first show. So next week, another Sean Campbell show on a Thursday or Friday. It is Thursday, so I did it today on Thursday. It's going to be done on Thursday. It's going to be uploaded on Thursday. So I'm going to get out of here. I'm on Triple U Fridays 
eight, no, 9 to 11 Fridays, except for this week, it's going to be 7 to 11, and the first two hours are going to be your songs and mixed bag. Of course, I'm filling in for Milo, and after that, it will be me on the Sean Canwell Show, 9 to 11 on the normal one. So that's for this week. Next week, it's back to the Sean Campbell Show, Fridays, 9 p.m. to 11 on Triple U. You can go onto the website, www.u or showhaven.seancampbellshow.info for the for the playlist. The playlist should be up by the time this video is up online. All right, that's it for me. I'll see you guys next week. You have just been shorned. <laughs>